and transcripts. Elizabeth, can you click on transcripts? Captions, I got it. Open question. It sounds like uh, Robert's rules of order matter. Yeah, well, I didn't. I, it was early in the morning, and I was like, uh. <laughs> okay. "All right." So it's not as formal as all that. Good. No, I'm not quite uh, ready to open with the Robert's rules of order. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> um, so, hi everybody. Welcome to the Chaos Metrics Model meeting. It's good to have everybody here. I think we have quite a few things on the agenda. Uh, for today. Um, so there was the this is the seemed like there were two kind of open questions and Don I'm kind of looking at you one it looked like around the project starter health metric model you had a conversation with was it who was it with Luis was it that kind of about the metrics that are in there as well wasn't there something there as well as with Yahui in Slack uh, yes, I, but the, the conversation with Luis is, um, specifically about how we're measuring the change closure ratio. Okay. Um, he had a very different idea of what he thought we meant by that. And he was trying to clarify it, but what he meant by it wasn't at all what we actually meant by the metric. So I'm just trying to clarify with him, oh, so but I suspect that we, all right. I think that's a question for comment. Maybe, maybe I, maybe we don't do that here. Fair enough. Longer, okay. longer conversation, I think. No problem. Um, thanks for that, though. And then how about the other part, the one with Yahui? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think, more specific to this. Yeah, and I think I think this brings up a broader question for, for the Chaos Project as a whole, because um, as far as I'm concerned, when when we that we uh, the Google Docs that we use to draft the metrics our way of collaborating on a metric until we get it in GitHub. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that point, um, from my perspective, we should probably never ever look at those documents again. Um, however, I know that lots of other people look at those documents, but the problem is the documents are out of date compared to what's in GitHub because all it takes is a couple of pull requests to make a few changes yep. to a metric. And then that, that Word doc uh -huh. is out of date. Yeah, yeah. But I, I know I, people like to go back to the Word doc the next time we revise the metric, and I think that's also a mistake because the the metric could have, um, you know, gone in a, a different direction. Even if it's even if it's just, you know, a matter of like a few, you know, typos or errors, you know, we those would end up creeping back in if we continue to use those those documents. Um, so the question that Yahui had was, hey, I was looking at the Word doc and it still has time to close in it. Um, and, and I was like, yeah, that shouldn't be there, um, that we should be using the one in, in the, on the website for the metric. Yeah, I tried to climb Actually, the hill like so three years ago and lost. So I do agree with your point. <clears throat> yeah, the, actually, the question from me actually comes up from the compass live. I, I, I'm looking at like metrics exists like in that model. I I compared with the with the models existing chaos. They are slightly different. I, I find one more metrics existing in compass live, which is not existing in, in the in the chaos metrics model. So I'm trying to look in by the Google Doc we had. So I saw I made a mistake when we implement such metrics model. So uh, I found that when we implement this metrics model, I mean the starter project health, uh, we do have that metric, but once we upload to the, uh, I mean the deployed in the chaos website, uh, this metric is, uh, is removed. So I'm thinking, um, and the collaboration between the chaos are, are, and the compass lab. So once there's one uh, any update, uh, something like this in this case, we removed uh, one metric from the metrics model. Maybe we, we need to set up strategy like to inform us to to update the metric uh, validation on the compass on the compass lab. I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Yeah, that's a good question because this this will keep coming up, right? And you know, in this case, we removed a whole metric, so that was really obvious. Um, other changes might not be so obvious. Like we might change the definition of a metric that's used within a metric model, and then how does Compass know that they need to change that that metrics model with an updated definition of a metric? I mean, it's it's a bigger problem even than just like the you know the pull requests to you know, to this working group, to the metrics models working group, it could also, mm -hmm. Compass could also yeah, be impacted true. by, you know, changes to any of the metrics. Yeah. And the uh, same thing for the other software, right? Augur and Grimoire Lab could have the same issue. Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed that uh, Shane will be demo a new such service today. I, uh, we may make the same lab question, uh, problem. Uh, after after we, we we are trying to deploy new metrics model or or the existing metrics model whenever they would be revised in any time, so um, so there's one solution that we at our uh, um, in each each of single mm -hmm. metrics model mm -hmm. we will add uh, like um, auger and uh, compass to declare in that definition that uh, this two um, this two service has be, has support has supported this metrics model mm. um, when people want to change uh, or update this metrics model they may let us <laughs> let these two service know uh, I, you need to update your 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 service maybe yeah i, I have a suggestion that I'm, might be yeah. a middle ground between we initially i don't think we're doing the update last are we still doing last review dates at the bottom of metrics or did we stop doing that now we're not right and we're not doing formal metric releases either right. however we could create a reference point for any tool to say this is the version of metrics that we're using simply by doing github releases on the repo where the metric is contained periodically and then just say this is part of, you know, repository release 1.1 or whatever. And that covers everything at the repo level. That's how software is released. And <clears throat> at least then if there's a difference between what people see in the metrics model on our website and the metrics model in the tool, they can they can line up the versions of the repositories in some way. And that that keeps us from having to do all that granular maintenance at the metric or metric model level and does give us a reference point for people to have some trust in what they're seeing because the tools are that that's, that's that's preactive pretty. versus proactive right it relies yes. on it relies on you knowing so again it relies on you yeah. knowing that something has changed to look yeah. to see what's changed and i think the right. problem is not knowing when something when something changes mm -hmm. but i think that there are there are better automated ways to do this right i mean i'm not sure i'm not sure exactly what happens within wordpress when it pulls in a github um, markdown file that's changed whether there's something we could trigger on that we could also i mean we could use something like like github <laughs> actions on the metrics repos <laughs> to to take some action when uh you know when a pull request is merged or when a metric is changed yeah there are automated ways i think to do this but yeah. i'm not sure i'm not the, the best place to do it might be in wordpress because then we could just restrict it to just when the something changes in a metric but i'm not sure if there's anything we can trigger on there yeah Actually, Shane just remember may reminder me that actually the metrics and metrics metrics model we had in uh, in chaos actually we if we treated that treat treated them as the software, they they should have a version control actually. So uh, when we release a new metric metrics model, we treat it as a you know version one point zero, and uh, we 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 should we could have we we could up, update. In end time after that, so any service uh, depend on this metrics or metrics model as a software. Uh, we should know that uh, the version we depend on is version one or version two. Is that a separate issue? I mean, it, I can track it, but is that like a different issue? So maybe issue three. Um, no, I mean. Yeah, 
I, I'm thinking the question we had, uh, the problem we have. Uh, should we introduce the version control on each of single matrix model or matrix and the matrix? It would be the repo level. That we could do it, I think. Uh, okay, so let me. I definitely cannot type and talk at the same time. Um, so maybe the first issue, Don, to your point of this whole thing, like having the Google, the link to the Google Docs in each of the things, along with the link to the GitHub metric, you know, like what we have here, and agree that these will diverge. Would it make sense that even just in this tracking spreadsheet to start, once a metric is released, we remove this? This I would I would remove the Google Doc. Yeah, and we can keep it here for anything that's like under in progress or considering. But yeah. if it's green, this just should be empty at that point. That's easy enough to do. That might be a good start. Do people have are people okay with that? Okay, because I agree with you, Don. For a while, I was actually trying to go into these, like copy them and then paste them into the Google Doc to make sure they were always aligned. But it's, I think to Sean's point, like, unless you do that, like every two weeks, there's a good chance that someone has uh, gone astray. Okay, yeah. I think that's completely fair. Um, issue two, which was how to inform downstream software solutions, um, that something has been updated. Elizabeth, do you know if there's anything in WordPress that could serve as a trigger that would send anything to anybody? <laughs> like, I think it might be better to do it in GitHub through like notifications or like Don said some some kind of action that would that would notify folks. Um, just because like WordPress, I don't know how like Augur or Compass would connect to WordPress. I guess is my question. I feel like they would connect better to GitHub somehow. We well, well, I think it's not about them connecting to it. It's about being able to being able WordPress being able to tell us when when something has changed yeah. and what that tell us would look like. I, you know, I, I guess it kind of depends. Yeah, and we've been having some issues just to be perfectly honest. We've been having some confusion about caching in WordPress also. Yesterday I was I was putting some PRs through and it did not update the WordPress page automatically. And then I did another one and some I did four files and some of the files updated automatically and some of them didn't. So I had to manually go in and trigger the update on some. So that piece is a little wonky right now. Um, I don't I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It feels like it's always the other way. It feels like mm -hmm. I have to, if anything, I have to tell WordPress when something is changed, not the other way around, if that makes sense. Eric has his hand up. Yeah. The wanted to speak to the version control because we've talked about this for a very long time and we came up with the solution for the translating the translating the metrics because there we had the same issue that the translators needed to know if a metric got changed from one release to the other. And I believe our solution in the end was that an issue was created when a change was made for the translators to look at. And I'm wondering if we can use the same process that we already have in place for the software as well. I just don't know how well this has worked since we came up with the idea. So do you know if you can have an action from one org drop an issue into another org? <clears throat> you can always. I do not. GitHub, yeah. GitHub actions are pretty flexible. I, yeah. I haven't used them myself, but um, well, I've, I've used I've used them. I've never developed one myself. You can uh, create. We, we have actions that do all kinds of crazy things. OK. I've used actions to create issues in other tools. 
in other, I'm sorry, in other repos, as long as it's a public repo, <clears throat> and you can use the GitHub API to create an open an issue in any repo. <clears throat> seems like that might be the most sensible thing that given a change to a metric or a metric model, if we can localize it down to that level, like just say if there's a change in this folder, I don't want to check on actions that post an issue in the OSS compass, some repository there, as well as in Augur, as well as wherever else we'd want to place an issue. And the issue could just simply be, this has changed <laughs> with a link to the, to the metric or the metric model. We could also create a team on GitHub that would have like uh, maybe a liaison from each of the, the SAS solutions and then just mention the whole team like in the issue itself or in the PR itself, just at the whole team. And then everybody, whoever that designated person is from your SAS solution would get that notification and then it's up to them to take it. I like that. But it just sends a message, not even drops an issue. Maybe do we have, um, I don't know if it's anybody on this call, but does somebody want to, I, I feel like this is something we should take offline so that we can get to the rest of the agenda. Um, is there somebody that wants to maybe investigate our options and come back to the team? Or maybe if nobody here, maybe we can find somebody else. Is uh, is there a website? I think the website, like I'm I'm actually sitting here looking through the different plugins and it's unclear to me which plugin is being used to bring things from GitHub. I think it might be the just it, GitHub no, show code. No. It's a special one that Linux Foundation made just for us. So there's very little documentation on how it works and it's a little bit wonky, but it's cool. Like when it works, it's awesome because it does pull that GitHub um, straight through. But yeah, there's like zero documentation on it. Do you remember the name of it? Probably not. I think, I, yeah, I don't even think it has a name. Like I think the LF just literally wrote it for us. And so okay. there's no website, there's no name, like there's nothing. It's like part, like in the okay. embedded in our web our work no, I, I do remember going through that one with Kevin I can't remember what they called it though yeah Kevin might know more about the you know the capabilities of WordPress to notify folks <clears throat> or to keep some kind of tabs on what's changed so we could would start somebody so to Don's point would somebody like to take on this to take a look at GitHub actions and just kind of see what it can and can't do if we make a change to a document in a repo our options might be anybody any takers 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 I feel like or... maybe some of the people with the technical skills to do this aren't necessarily the people in this call or technical skills plus time to do this and my issue would be my issue would be time like i i know kevin and i spent probably a day dealing with this um linux foundation plugin elizabeth mentioned when we removed the website or redid the website so <clears throat> um I, I don't have that time this month um, over the summer at some, some point. Yeah, maybe I, uh, uh, I also don't have time this month, but uh, I, I, I can do next month, actually. Yeah, like well, this, this one. Isn't, you know what, this isn't urgent. Why don't we just file this as an issue in either the common or the metrics model working group and see if somebody has time to pick it up? And then if not, one of us can maybe get to it in a month or two over the summer when we've got a little more time, because it's not, mm -hmm. it's not super urgent. Mm -hmm. It's not like we have to do this right this minute. Yeah. I think we've, we've got time to sit on it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I clicked visit. Actually, <laughs> I, visit I clicked visit <laughs> plugin site for the LF plugin, and it's literally a blank HTML yeah. page. <laughs> I looked at it yesterday because I was trying to debug those <coughs> things. Yeah, it's literally blank. All right. Uh, cool. Thank you. This is a good conversation. Um, Sean, I, I think this is probably you that you yeah. to talk well, about this. Yeah, I just wanted to show wanted to your screen. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's nominally it's not yet fully related to metric models because we haven't labeled or implemented metric models, but we have implemented um, a number of things that are to to uh, a couple of tech companies, the things they want to see right away. So if we look at the chaos org, you can see commits, issues, pull requests at a real high level, and then they have three dash plotly pages. This is all based on auger data, where they generate uh, graphics contributor growth 
by engagement, new contributors by month. Of course, always during a demo, it goes slow for me. Um, issue staleness, issues over time, commits over time. I think uh, <clears throat> Yahoo, where this is uh, not as well architected as Compass as we use the same database for inserting data as we do for retrieving data. And right now we're in the process of inserting 22,000 repos for num focus. Um, <clears throat> so that one's coming up slow. Let's see if the chaos one loads any faster. Nope. So <clears throat> it's in uh, it's in much it's an earlier alpha type of release, and eventually all of this will come up. But it is not coming up for whatever reason right now. Beauty, wait a minute. Maybe if I stop switching tabs so fast, I thought I saw a graph there for a minute. Well, we don't need to uh, waste time on this, but um, you can create a user. And if you click manage groups, it opens up a tab to Augur and you can create a new group and you can put in any org, any org repo combo, full URL. And if the data is already in the database, uh, it'll just give you that data right away. If it's not, it'll queue the data for collection. So probably the most useful part of it is how easy it is to just add repos to it. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to, to point it out because I did open, for all of our released metrics models, I, I have issues open on this is a tool called OSS-Aspen 8 knot that uh, reads auger data and for each tool um, for each metric model that we've released there's an open issue to create the metric model here as well um, and we did met so separate from this not sure why i'm going slow this morning but i'm sure it's because i'm loading a ton of data uh, so i'll stop sharing and save us time when the data comes back maybe i'll share once more at the end um, so Sean, is the intention to to deploy metrics models like what they've done? Yeah, yes. yeah. So the, my intention is to deploy metrics models. I think from the perspective of uh, Red Hat and a few other companies, um, the purpose is to deploy the metrics that they think are important to look at together. And those don't necessarily, those don't precisely correspond with what we have defined as metrics models. But the origins of our metrics models are very similar. Um, there are groups of metrics deployed together um, for a purpose. And like I said, I've uh, opened eight issues to create the metrics models that we've released um, in this tool and uh, to try to make, just like with Compass, to try to make some things available for people that they can experiment with. But obviously it's, it's not as far along as Compass in terms of the performance engineering right now. So are the issue the issues are metrics models that haven't been released, like metrics models that have been released that we have not yet here. They're yet in released here, but not deployed explicitly as those metrics models in this in metrics.chaos.io. Okay. Do you have models that are not on this list that you have deployed? I think so. What I need to do is a sort of a comparison between which things are on which pages and what things are in what metrics models and see okay. if, if there's perhaps just a few things missing uh, to make it an implementation of a metrics model. But I haven't done that analysis. Um, our goal was to have this up for ChaosCon, which we did. And then um, Red Hat has their summit starting today. And so they're demoing their version of it there. Um, this is the public version of it that I showed you. Okay. <clears throat> Um, questions, comments for Sean on this? This does raise just kind of one ongoing thing that I think about a lot, <laughs> just to, yeah. which, which is like, we have tools sometimes, or is Georg still on? Like you have your, you know how you have your like metric stuff of the month, you know what I mean? Or like models, like, I'm not quite sure how we, how we connect um, or like the dashboards from Grimoire Lab, how we connect what's been developed in software to 
to kind of a written specification that we track here. That seems to be a bit of a problem, not like a yeah. bad problem, but something that I think about how to overcome. So, so you get what I'm saying, like a piece of software, we, like, hey, let's do this thing. And then we don't have it captured here. We've, we've, I think we've laid the ground. <clears throat> so at the very beginning of, of Chaos Project, Augur actually linked back to the metrics that were affiliated with our API endpoints. And then we just stopped doing that because the location of the metric kept changing in the GitHub repository or on the website. <clears throat> but now we have stable URLs for each of the metrics. So now I think the tools are able to, to provide that chaos reference again. And that's a pretty recent development that we have that consistent metric. And so I think in a perfect world, then every project would use the, the consistent permanent URL to indicate that this is an implementation of this chaos metric model or this chaos metric that that would be the roadmap. And you know, we only had those stable URLs for uh, maybe six months. Yeah, that's not great. Go ahead. The conversation for taking the, the work that is done in the implementation and the software back into the specification. I know we had the conversation on Slack for the risk assessment framework. A blog post that I authored. And my hope right now is that I'll take some time off next week and then I would be happy to start the draft to get that in. Okay. Yeah, so, it's, it's that connection, right? That that I was talking yeah. about. <clears throat> minimal in software. We don't have that reference point at all. But yeah, that'd be great, Georg. Yeah, and it's on our roadmap to put that those links back in Augur because we have chaos metrics implemented. We just <clears throat> stopped providing the links. Mine's really the us described. Mine's really the other direction. So you implement something in Augur. Yeah, and then have that that we don't have like documented here as a reference point. So mm -hmm. like how because like even those graphs that you were showing in eight knot Augur eight knot. Yeah. Some of those are a little bit different than what we have here documented. Absolutely. And so how do we get like what you have deployed in in your software environment to be documented here as a reference point? That's the question. Like, <clears throat> there seems yeah. to be the pro some problem. And again, it's not like I think about this, like how do we improve that process? Yeah. By we can yeah. Identify what you're doing in software and then get it developed here. Yeah, I think I think most of the most of the graphs um, do have uh, a chaos metric behind them. I okay. don't think the pages have a metric model behind them, and that therein lies the the challenge. And and then there are some times where Grimoire Lab and Augur create things that are not metrics, as you described. And the, the, I guess the question is like, for example, Grimoire Lab has seventy or more panels in um that's it sig sigils you know that's a lot of work to go through all that and if there's not a metric or a model that reflects it to then create that yes um and it would be that's it <laughs> you know so <laughs> that's so i mean i think i think this is almost a on the scale of an initiative to systematically uh support Pro, like for each project to prove like I think um, actually compass does the best job of linking the, the chaos information directly to what's on the page. And I think for Grimoire Lab and Augur and Ain't Not, um, it's, it's an initiative to, you know, for somebody that works on each of those projects to say, here's how you identify whether or not there's a metric and here's how you include the link for that metric if it exists and here's how you propose a new metric if it's on the page but it doesn't exist right and you know we, pro we provide a process uh for each tool and um engage the community in in making those additions um that would be sort of my ideal vision like i, I don't know what georg thinks from a more like perspective but <clears throat> I share that vision. It's just the like how <laughs> how to make that process work. That's 
I so anyway, we can move on. It's just maybe something to think about for everybody. I know we have a couple other things on the agenda today. I, I would wonder, also like. I almost, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Georg. I already said what I wanted to say. I just wanted to put in my plus one. What I uh, so this got me thinking. I wonder if at some point maybe we want to get um, an intern, Google Summer of Code student, somebody who could use the metrics and you know work with the Augur team, work with the Grimoire Lab team, and identify all of the metrics in those platforms, mm -hmm. and then file issues in the appropriate working group for any that don't exist. Right. Like, like, that, yeah. like like just give some initial structure even to the metric or metric model just like approximately this is what a description could be yeah or, okay. if, or if nothing else um you know put uh exactly how it's been calculated within the tool that's do that's using it so interestingly Prussia seems to be doing that kind of thing she's building a comprehensive list of metrics in Augur and Grimoire Lab mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you is familiar with her work right now. Yeah, I'm giving her the list <clears throat> of um, of metrics in Augur, but like we don't have, I can't, we don't have any reference points to where in Augur it exists, like on the page. Maybe talk with her. And I don't think we're more lab either. Does part either. Of her. No, no, we don't. But if she's already doing part of the work, halfway there, maybe talk with her to see if we can go the next step with her. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. I do have the I do have the site working again. There's an order of operations. We were working on it last night and I didn't you have to restart you have to start Augur before you start uh eight not so that was what my problem was. Okay. Um Elizabeth, do you know about this work that Precious is doing? A little bit. She just reached out to me yesterday to see if I knew where a list of all the metrics that were in Augur were, and I did not have that answer. <laughs> so and I, then, I, yeah. I pointed she, it back to Sean and the Augur team uh, in Slack, but yeah. I didn't know that she was working on that. She was looking for that. So. Yep. Yeah, no, and we've been we've been corresponding, um, not in Slack, but in email, um, and uh, I'm going to get her that list this morning. Okay. Um, okay. I like this. I like the idea of an mentorship opportunity too to help. Kind of structure that work so okay um compass lab metrics components yuhui did you put this here yeah it's me okay go ahead uh, actually I, I have one one more question to shen that um have you ever talked to students in in european countries or or in usa that they are willing to help us to to doing the auger implementation or Grim lab implementation So say it again. So you have students who are interested in doing implementation work with Grimoire Lab and Augur. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, 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 I'm all ears. I, talk, talk, talk. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I actually uh, have a conversation with the students in in, in China uh, from different universities. Uh, actually, they do not have so much. Show so much interest on, on helping us to to implement those metrics directly. They are more care about the data analytics. Um, after, you know, oh, we got the we got the uh, refine the data instead of uh, to to uh, implement how to uh, uh, fetch the data and clean the data. That's the big issue for me uh, to implement Compass to try and uh, when, when, when I'm trying to get support from those students. What? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll I'll say Augur's never had a beautiful front end and at chaos kind of characterized it more as a data engineering tool, which is really what it is, because the work that we've accomplished is every time there's a new data anomaly that comes from a platform or a Git log, we handle it, you know, we put, we do a pull request and we fix it. And you'd be surprised at how often there are new data anomalies or subtle changes to the types of data returned by APIs um, that need to be addressed. 
So, and I think Grimoire Lab similarly for the way they collect data with Percival um, has to deal with that routinely as well. So I do think we have um, some really good data engineering tools that they could use and perhaps um, help to improve Compass in that in that way. Mm. Yeah. Is Yuhui. that what you were asking, Yuhui, or did I miss the boat? Yeah, I actually, I'm 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 also trying to seeking support from from more people outside outside community from the university students. Yuhui, is it students that have an interest in asking questions against the data that has been collected? So less about like actually collecting the data, but asking, say, exactly. questions. Okay. So, I mean, as yeah. part of this, you know, we are going to be moving towards, uh, you know, kind of a data science approach probably a little bit later this summer. And that's probably something we could think mm -hmm. about as to how to include people that may have questions against the data that is collected and how to do that effectively. So I think probably more to come on that in the next couple months. And, and these questions would be, I mean, I think they'd potentially be you know, platform agnostic, you know, like whether it's on Compass or Augur or Grimoire Lab, you know, how we think about the data that is generated from them. I think the question still might be the same. And I think that'd be very interesting. And I think that's something we're very interested in doing in the chaos project starting a little bit later this summer. Hope so, yeah. Cool. Okay, great. Um, so that's not this. So do you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, yeah, that that's the topic I want to discuss today. Oh, that was uh, it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, I can I can show my screen. Yep. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Yep. Where's my screen? Okay, here. Yeah, I I'm trying just to trying to show this Compass Lab a little bit more. Uh, to remind you, I I'm not sure if you <laughs> remember it right, but I I'm I I would quickly go through the whole instruct instruction of the compass lab. Uh, the okay here the thing, uh, they this the compass lab we uh we already done for the starter pro project chaos matrix model, and but um the way we collaborate uh with the uh, between the chaos and uh, and the compact is that after this comp uh, matrix model def one definition is completed uh, in in chaos, and uh, uh, the members from compass would start the validation and the implementation in the compass. Uh, I mean under the compass lab, but I'm thinking that uh, if we could uh, implement uh, or discuss. Uh, a new matrix model uh, mean mean times that we we can create by, by ourselves during the discussion that would be great so um i mentioned here a little bit uh create your own models in five minutes yep uh, select the data site we provide and select the matrix we we had uh, that uh, support matrix um, uh, under under matrix model, uh, sorry. Um, actually, I think we already have this this one. Yeah, select matrix uh, five uh, five uh, one hundred matrix originated from chaos and select the algorithm and publish models uh, that's that's the our thinking uh, create uh, this matrix model so uh, the process is that um, uh, you can name your model here and uh, select the data site we provide some data site from different categories and uh, select the matrix we already had um, implement in compass and originated from chaos um, actually that's the topic I want to discuss today uh, how to implement how to how to, uh, as a priority out there uh, as different priorities and then select the algorithm so here is the the next step that uh, you know how to add a data site you want to choose for a new matrix model 
and uh, and in in this matrix model, which metrics you would like to use, uh, you can select one of them or, or uh, three or five uh, or ten. Uh, yeah, that's the data size. And unselect uh, the metrics, um, select up to 10 uh, metrics or more. Uh, and then select uh, uh, algorithm. You can, you can have some, we can provide some default algorithm or you can you can define it by yourself. And after that, uh, you can let people to uh, invite people to work together with you uh, on this new metrics model creation. And um, and um, actually, I'm start doing so uh, from step by uh, step by by step. Um, the data size is really high, actually, so that's not a problem. So thing is that we, you know, in chaos, we have many, many metrics uh, that uh, already defined in chaos. And uh, I've only, I, I, I want to um, pre, pre utilize those metrics, which should be uh, deployed or implemented uh, at first. So uh, I create a, a table Actually, this I copied uh, from this one. Sorry. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This was, um, uh, I think it's created by, by Matt, right? So yeah. uh, we have matrix model and uh, each matrix model have different uh, metrics. And uh, I copied this sheet and here uh, we have the matrix model uh, in chaos and also deployed in in chaos in compass at the same time I, at first the column I default I listed the metrics we already uh, supported in the compass and uh, here is the link I'm showing uh, sorry uh this the metric is is mapping to this uh, the metric definition in chaos this is the deployment i'm showing here it's uh, using the uh kubernetes <clears throat> yeah this one uh so So I list all the matrix model we already supported in KL, in Compass and list all the metrics we supported in Compass under this matrix model. And I want to implement in the, those metrics as, as, a, as Compass Lab component, uh, what I mentioned that's here. So that's a, from a software engineering perspective, that's kind of a brilliant way to do it because then you have a component for each metric and if we're using the metric and multiple metrics models you just drop that component on the metric model page right exactly exactly yeah, yeah no it's so a, it's a really, good, really good engineering have, strategy so, i like it yeah as i mentioned we because we have so many metrics already uh i wanted uh Chaos people help 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 me to define the prior, pri priority, which one should be implemented first as a compass lab component. Then we can we can start implementation those metrics component in compass. Uh, after that, people could uh, could select uh, the metrics model. Uh, sorry, metrics component. Uh, they want to drag uh, to to compose a new metrics model, and um, then the working uh, progress could uh, could be going forward uh uh fluently what i mean so Got it. this so this um I'll, I'll just say my first my first answer would be identify any metrics that are part of more than one metric model and the metric with the highest n of participating in metrics models i would put those the highest <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah but it's yeah it's it's uh 
obviously, you know, I mean, obviously this is one of the tracking it. Spreadsheets are great. Answering that question, spreadsheets make it up. It's not as easy to figure it out. Um, yeah. But I think it would be so pretty easy to take the spreadsheet, trying, put it in the database table and count. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm trying to do a, mm -hmm. a, a, something like a survey that to, to let people know which metrics you have more interest on to use in the future metrics model. And uh, we could pick up those metrics mo metrics to be uh, implemented as a compass lab component first. Yeah. Well, Yuhui, from my perspective, I agree with Sean that any metric that is appearing in more than one metric model seems to be a good candidate. I would also just say kind of from experience, it does seem like a lot of the metrics that were released in the evolution working group are kind of very atomic metrics generally and might be mm -hmm. good candidates for, for this. And they're things we end up talking about a lot pretty often as they seem to, to be pretty broad. And then the second working group is common. The metrics that are in common also seem to have pretty broad reach at least this is just from my own personal experience in the chaos project over the years. I'd, I'd also add from a software engineering perspective, most things that are related to pull requests, issues, or commits, the, the component is just going to be a slightly different view of mostly the same data. So, for example, mm -hmm. once you build your first issue or pull request or commit component, um, there's there may be like... Uh, subcomponents or core library pieces that can go into any component related to a PR, an issue or a commit, because these are core objects and be, and be reused and provided different parameters in the component for the specific metric about those things. Mm, <clears throat> sure, that's true. So we are at the end of time. This seems like a pretty reasonable conversation to pick up on Slack as well. And I understand your question, Yuhui, and I'll take a look at this tab. Do you want, do you want people just to use the drop-down boxes that you put in there or the? Yeah. To... Yeah. Please do so. Yeah. Is that okay if like, I just make a judgment call and just say high or low? Cause <laughs> okay. I can, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. And thanks for kind of building out that, prior tab as well. Um, anyway, we're at the end. There, there were some metrics models that I did move forward. One was around um, project influence. So we'll pick that up next time or I'll put it in the in the Slack channel. And then likewise, I do think we do, I think we have a couple metrics models looking at them today that are done for all intents and purposes. Um, so it'd, it'd be great to get some closure on some of those as well as we, continue to not only develop software around these models, but the models themselves. So anyway, that was um, my last, last day. Yuhui, is there a link to that spreadsheet that you were sharing? It's just Did in you... our metrics tracking spreadsheet. Yeah. I oh, it's, it's, li it's in the metrics tracking spreadsheet. Okay. I was making it too hard. It's lost the sheet. Yeah. Oh, yep. Got it. Okay. Everybody, thank you very much for your time and energy today. I think most people Thank like you. trains. I learned that everybody likes trains. <laughs> Amongst the many things I take away from today. <laughs> All right, everybody, till next time, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.